the book of John, John chapter 8, starting from verse 37. All right? Now, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. And they are talking about who is their father. All right? So the Pharisees, they have studied the scriptures. They have studied the law. They are interpreters of the law. They know the law very well. All right? They are masters. Nobody is as good as them. So they know who they are. Or they think so. So they have studied people. People with pedigrees. People who have studied long hours. Put in long, long hours of study of Scripture. Alright? So here now, they are speaking to Jesus about who is their father. So before this verse, there was a lot of talk about fathers. And then Jesus now comes to the conclusion. All right, so let's get started. Verse 37. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. All right, so they were talking about Abraham being their father. All right, remember, Abraham was the father of all the Jewish people. Okay, he became a Jew. He was not a Jew at the start. He was a Chaldean. He came out of the land of the Chaldees. He was a Chaldean. And when God called him out, God says, I will make you a great nation. So the nation became the nation of Jews. So of course, the Pharisees, they can trace back right to the time when Abraham came out of Chaldees. And they say, look, we, we, meaning we Jews, all of us Jews, we are the seed of Abraham because we came. Look, we can actually trace back our genealogy, all right, our ancestry right to Abraham. So we are Abraham's seed. But now Jesus has come and Jesus is going to tell them who they really are. He says, I know you are Abraham's seed. Yeah, I know. I know what you are trying to tell me. By the genealog genealogy, genealogy, all right, going back, trace, tracing your ancestry, yes, you came from Abraham, but you seek to kill me. So, you, Pharisees, you want to kill me, Jesus. Why? Because my word has no place in you. Now, isn't that strange? Jesus was a Jew. The Pharisees were all Jews. All these Jews are having this conversation about Abraham. So what is the point Jesus is making? They are Jewish, you are Jewish. Why fight? Verse 38. Jesus is starting to explain now. I speak that which I have seen with my father. Okay? Look at the words here. Jesus is saying, I what? Speak. Jesus spoke. Jesus speaks. What does he speak about? That which I have what? Seen with my father. So Jesus does not do anything which the father does not do. Everything which the Father does, Jesus sees, speaks, and then after that, He does. All right? So that's what Jesus says. I speak. He's speaking about His Father, God the Father. And you, who is the you here? Come on. Who is the you that Jesus is talking about? The Pharisees. You... What's the next word? You do. Jesus speaks. The Pharisees do. 
you do that which you have seen with what? Your father. Somewhere here, Jesus is now starting to draw the line. Because they were talking about fathers. They say, look, Abraham is our father. Abraham is your father. So we have the same fathers, right? And Jesus says, wait a second. I, before verse 37, I am not from this world. I have a father. And he will go into that later on. But right now he's saying, look, I speak that which I have seen my father. Can you see that that father is capitalized? Father, capitalized. But you, Pharisees, you do which you have seen with your father. Is this father capitalized? No. So Jesus is now taking them on a journey whereby Jesus says, Look, you have no idea what you are doing. You have a different father. I have a father. You also have a father. But these two fathers are different. I have a father. You have a father. You do what you saw your father do. I speak what I see my father speaks. Okay? Are you still with me so far? Think about these Pharisees. Learned men. Men who have spent their whole lives reading right from Genesis onward. They read through everything. They have already interpreted it. They say, yes, our father, Abraham, and Abraham did this, so God was pleased with Abraham. Now Jesus is saying, I have a father, but you also have a father. One is capitalized, one is not. Okay, let's move on. Verse 39. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. So now they are linking back to Abraham. Abraham is our father. They are telling Jesus. And Jesus says to them, okay, so we are talking about Abraham first. If you were Abraham's children, Jesus said to the Pharisees, if you said you are from Abraham. So let's see whether you are really from Abraham. If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. All right? You would do the works of Abraham. So, of course, what are the works of Abraham? Okay, next scripture, Romans chapter 4. All right, I'll take you there. Romans chapter 4, verses 2 to 3. Romans 4, verses 2 to 3. Here, the scripture define what are the works of Abraham? All right? Because Jesus says, if you are really the children of Abraham, this is what you will do. Okay? For if Abraham were justified by works, so Abraham did many things in his lifestyle, in his lifetime. But if Abraham were justified by works, that means Abraham did this, and then God says, oh, Abraham, you are so great, that's why you earn salvation. So if Abraham were justified by works, he has way off to glory, but not before God. That means if Abraham was so good, that means Abraham should be glorified, not God. Because Abraham is so good. So how was Abraham made good? How was Abraham justified? How did Abraham get his righteousness? How? Was it by his good works or was it by some other means? Okay, next verse. For what says the scripture? All right, now he goes back to the scripture. What does the scripture actually say about Abraham and his work? Abraham, what, what was the work that, what was the one 
essential thing that Abraham did. Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God. Abraham did many things. Some good things, a whole lot of bad things. But there was one essential thing that Abraham did. Abraham believed God. And that, that one thing, it, was counted onto him for what? Righteousness. There was only one thing that Abraham did, one work, he believed in God. He did this, he did that, he did many bad things, he did some good things. All of those things were counted for nothing. One thing, one work that Abraham did mattered everything. He believed in God. Abraham believed in God. And just for that one work, that belief, it was counted. It means one, right? It, not like a whole bunch of things. It was counted onto Abraham for righteousness. So when Abraham stands before God, God sees Abraham as perfectly righteous because Abraham believed in God. Remember, Jesus was not around at that time. All right? Jesus was not manifested. Jesus was around, but he was not manifested in the flesh because this is in the Old Testament. All right, now let's move back to John. Now Jesus is manifested. All right? So verse 39 again, they answered, said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus says to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. So what was the work which was counted for Abraham? That one work. Because all other works were not counted. There was only one work which the Bible says was counted as righteousness for Abraham. What was that one work? He believed God. So basically, Jesus is saying, if you were Abraham's children, you would believe in God as well. Do the works of Abraham. Look at verse 40 now. But now you seek to kill me, Jesus. Jesus says, look, you Pharisees, you do all of this work and you seek to kill me. A man that has told you the truth. Who is the truth? Jesus. Which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. Abraham didn't do this. But look, I have come to tell you. I am telling you the truth. I am the truth. I heard this from my father but you have a different father so now jesus is taking the pharisees and answering their questions and coming to a conclusion as to who is their father all right <coughs> so the first thing jesus says is you cannot even be abraham's seed because abraham believed god but you don't so what do you believe in that's basically the question here. All right? Verse 41. Once again. <coughs> you, Pharisees, learned people of the law, you what? You do. You do the deeds of your father. And many people cannot understand it. They say, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with being good? What's wrong with doing all of this law? Well, here is Jesus' answer for you. You do the deeds of your father. Your father told you to do. My father talks to me. And then I speak to you. That's Jesus. You Pharisees, you do the deeds of your father. Is that father capitalized? No. Shocking. Because the Pharisees were well ingrained, well steeped, well learned in doing things. 
And here is Jesus castigating them. You do the deeds of your father. I am sure, I am absolutely sure the Pharisees look at Jesus and say, Jesus, you, and later on it actually does say that, Jesus, you must be of the devil. How can you say that, Jesus? We who are upholding the law, we are doing all these deeds, and here comes Jesus saying, you do. Yes, you are doing, but you are doing the deeds of your father, not my father. Then said they to him, you see, they still didn't understand, so the Pharisees said to Jesus, what do you mean by that? We are not born of fornication. All right. So they left Abraham now. They said, look, we are Jewish people. We are not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. So now they are saying, we, thank you, we have the same father, Jesus. Can you see, is this father capitalized? Yes. So we have Yahweh as well. You say that's your father, but we also have the same father, even God, Yahweh. Okay, if you don't agree about Abraham, but you see, we are Jewish people, we have the law, we are full of good deeds, so that means you say, Jesus, you say you have the Father, right? Capital Father. We also have the same Father as you, Jesus. If you don't agree that we come from Abraham, at least you have to say, we have the same Father. Verse 42. Jesus said to them, Listen carefully to what Jesus said. Jesus said to the Pharisees, If, if, look, you said God is your father, right? So if God were your father, you would love, come on, me, Jesus. Everybody says, well, God is the same. God is my father. This is God. This is God. But it's different. If God were your father, then you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God the Father. Neither came I of myself. I didn't come by myself. But he sent me. All right? For all millennials out there, this is what actually is. You see, we all know God is three in one. They are one in spirit, and yet they are distinct. You have never seen, nobody has ever seen God the Father, the face of God the Father. Many, many people have seen the face of Jesus and the Holy Spirit who resides in us. Alright? Now, for everybody, all millennials out there, so you see, if God, the Father, has a cell phone, all right? I'm just taking, uh, you know, liberty here. Too. So, just because I want you to understand this. So, if God, the Father, takes a cell phone and does a selfie, all right? So, God looks at himself. Nobody has ever seen God, but God can see himself. So, God looks at himself and he presses the button and the selfie is taken. And if you, and God says, okay, here, look at me. Who do you think is there on the phone? Jesus. Because Jesus is the revelation of God in the flesh. God is revealed in Jesus. He is the exact representation of God the Father, Jesus. 
everything about God you want to know, you look at Jesus. There is not a single thing different between God the Father and God the Son. He is the exact express revelation of the Father. All right? So for everybody who says, well, I don't understand God. I don't know what God wants. Just look at Jesus and you will understand exactly who God is and what God wants. Exactly, because they are the same. Look at what it says again. I proceed forth and came from, come on, God the Father. Neither came I of myself. So Jesus didn't come and do something else which the Father didn't do, which the Father didn't say, nothing. They are exactly the same. All right, remember one message I gave before? People say, can God look at sin? And many people say, oh, no, no. We, our teaching was very simple. God cannot look at sin because God is holy. Say so. Look at Jesus. Did Jesus look at sin? Did Jesus look at sinners? He spent his time with them. So how can you say God cannot look at sin? Because Jesus looked at sin and he looked at it full in the face to redeem them from their sin. You want to know who God the Father is? You look at Jesus. That's what he said. I came forth from God, neither came I of myself, but he, God the Father, he sent me. So I am the revelation of God the Father. That's what Jesus said. All right? Let's move on. Verse 43. So now he's still talking to the Pharisees. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Because you see, the Pharisees cannot receive from Jesus because they have a different father. That is why so many people have a hard time understanding who Jesus is, who grace is, because the people are stuck in the law. Whenever the law is preached, the Bible says, a veil will come down which prevents that person from ever seeing Jesus as grace. They cannot see it. No matter what you do, they will never see it because of that veil. And Jesus is now talking to the Pharisees and he's saying, you cannot see it. You cannot understand my speech. You see, no matter what Jesus does, the Pharisees will not accept it because they want to kill him. Remember? You want to kill me. That's what Jesus says. If you are really from Abraham, why would you want to kill me? And you said we have the same father, so why do you want to kill me? Why cannot you understand my speech? Because you cannot hear my word. You cannot hear my word. And why is that so? Here comes the answer now. Next verse. Why cannot they hear the words of Jesus? Jesus will give you the answer. You are of your father, the devil. You are of your father, the devil. That is all those people who refuse to hear Jesus. You are of, you, yes, you say you are Abraham's children. You say you, God is your father, so you, that means you are the children of God. But actually you are not, because if you really were, then you would listen to Jesus. But the Pharisee says, why should we? We have our things to do. We know what to do. We know what is good. We know what is bad. Remember the Garden of Eden, Genesis? First thing I talk First thing which I explained to you, there were, at the start, one tree in the garden. 
And God says, don't eat from this tree. Don't eat from the fruit of this tree. Because the moment you eat the fruit of this tree, come on, you will know good and evil. That means you know what to do. Self-works comes in. The moment you know what is good and what is bad from eating from the tree, God says you will die spiritually. Adam and Eve ate from the tree. The moment you eat from the tree, their eyes were open, their conscience came, and they know good and evil. The moment you know good and evil, people say, what's wrong with that? Good and evil is great. Just do good, avoid bad. Because now you start to depend on yourself. I have done good, why do I need God? If I do bad, then all I have to do is do more good, and the good will overcompensate for the bad. So I already know. You see, I don't need Jesus because I know what is good and what is bad. And that brought death to everybody. You move yourself away from God and you say, I can do it. And that's what the Pharisees were stuck in. And millions and millions and millions of people believe that. I know what is good. So because I am good, I don't need Jesus at all. I know what is good, so why do I need Jesus? I just do what is good, try my best to, do, to not do what is bad, right? Because it's bad. I mean, in my definition of good and bad, I don't care what God's definition is. I know that this is good. All right, I will do the good. I know this is bad, I will not do the bad thing. Why do I need Jesus? Jesus is not important in my life. I don't have to come and listen to Jesus. I don't need to know what Jesus says. I don't need grace because I got the law. I know what to do. And this is Jesus' reply. You are of your father, the devil. Because that's what the devil made you do. He made Adam and Eve eat from the tree. You are of your father. You, you think you have the same father, but you don't. Your father is the devil because the devil tricked you and continues to trick you. And the last of your father, you will do. You are going to do many things, whatever you think is right, and avoid all those things which you think are wrong, but that actually is from the devil because the devil was the serpent in the garden, came in the guise of a serpent, and trick Adam and Eve. And all of you are still stuck there. That's what Jesus is saying to the Pharisees. You are stuck there. He was a murderer from the beginning. That was the sa Satan, the devil. And a boat not in the truth. He doesn't want to be with Jesus because there is no truth in him. Jesus says, I am the truth. And if you know the truth, this is before verse 37, if you know the truth, that's me, the truth will set you free. Jesus will set you free. That's what he talked to the Pharisees. But the Pharisees cannot see it because the Pharisees are stuck in their thinking. They believe it was good. But Jesus says, actually, you, you are actually just following the devil. Whatever the devil tells you, that's what you are doing. Because there is no truth in the devil. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own. For he is a liar and the father of all lies. You think you are doing good. You do many good things. But actually, you are just following a big lie. Now, how do you think the Pharisees felt? Look, once again, this is scripture. This is what God teaches us. You may have learned a hundred different ways of how to be good, what to do. Come back to the Word of God. 
There is nothing like the Word of God. Nothing. Because everything else is a lie. Because the devil is a liar. And he is the father of all lies. You don't like this lie, I give you another lie. You don't like this one, I can give you many other lies. One of these lies you will like and you will say, yes, I like that. But it's also a lie. So everybody comes from different backgrounds. How you grow up, how your parents raise you, what church you went to, what church you didn't go to, what you heard on TV. And everyone has told you something. The Pharisees learn it very well. They learn it from other Pharisees. And now it's... Uh, shared by rabbis. Rabbis are just another word for teachers. All right? So there are many teachers who have taught you. And you come in with those teachings in your head. Remember, Pharisees, right at the top of the ladder of learning. And Jesus says, Everything you learn is a lie because of the devil. You have to hear my words, not somebody else's words. And even though you have learned this your whole life, it is time to lay down the lie and take up the truth who is Jesus. You either will do it or you will not do it. You see, I was taught many things in my life. Many things. Some good, some bad. Good and bad. But then when I started reading scripture, it's either I accept what Jesus says and I change and I say, that's actually repent. Repent is to change one's mind. So it's either you repent, you don't repent from sins. You repent in your mind to change your mind about what God says and then you get rid of all that teaching for what Jesus says. Do you think the Pharisees did it? See, come on, you know the answer. So how many of us are still stuck there? Just like the Pharisees. We learn it this way, this is what we do. And Jesus says, yes, you will do that because your father is the devil and you don't even know it because the, you have believed a lie. And that lie you will believe until you die. Your father is the devil. Look, you are of your father, the devil. Jesus doesn't mince his words and try to put it in a politically correct way. Well, you know, it could be this, it could be that, you know, but, you know, let's compromise. No, you either believe in Jesus. Jesus says, I speak. The Pharisees, you do. One speak, one do. Different fathers. Let's move on. Verse 45. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. You will not believe me because I tell you the truth. Which of you convinced me of sin? And I say the truth. Why do you not believe me? Verse 47. He that is God, all right? So if you say your father is God, hears God's words. You therefore hear them not because you are not of God. Once again, if you know and you say God is your father, then you will hear what God says. Because that's what Jesus says. Jesus says, I come down from my father and I'm going to speak to you. What am I speaking about? I'm speaking, come on, God's words. So God the father spoke to the son and the son came down and spoke what the father spoke to him about. You, therefore, you do not hear them, 
you do not hear God's word because you are not of God. You have a different father, so you are hearing a different language. You are hearing a different tune. You are doing things when God is speaking, you are doing. Think about that. What did God say to you? God says, once again, back to Abraham. Abraham believed in God. The belief. All those who believe in me, Jesus says. Your belief in Jesus, your belief alone in Jesus, gives you your salvation and maintains your salvation. Your belief in Jesus alone gives you freely your salvation and then maintains your salvation through this whole life. You cannot add even one thing to do what Jesus did for you on the cross. We sang the song just now. He paid the full price for us. Full. There is nothing you can add to it. Nothing. The moment you bring up one little point, you join the ranks of the Pharisees and you say, sorry God, I don't believe what you say through your son. I know better because that is what I heard. Yes, you heard. You heard from your father, the devil. If you really hear from Jesus, and Jesus says, it is finished, as he hung on the cross, that means it is finished. And all the Pharisees look and say, Jesus, it is finished. Yeah, of course, it's finished. You died. I'm going back to what I am supposed to do. And I'm going to do it very well, because I'm a Pharisee. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do it well. And everybody will look at me at how well I can do it. Because, look at me, I'm so good. And Jesus says, look, on the cross, price paid in full, victory secured, salvation secured, you in God's palm, never again to be plucked out, not in and out, in and out, in and out. Remember how I wrote in my book, there's no revolving door, right? So you enter into the kingdom, and then suddenly, because it's a revolving door, you did something bad, and now you revolve out. So how do you revolve back in again? You see, there's no such thing. Jesus died one time for you, took you through the door, He's the door, He's the way, you enter, and that's it. There is no coming out again once you go in. And you may say, all types, there are all types of arguments out there as to why you can come out again. But every one of those reasons is dependent on you, not on Jesus. And that's what the Pharisees stand on. The Pharisees, because the devil is their father, will tell you, you were once in, but because of your behavior or because of some other things, now you are out. Because that's what the devil wants you to think. The devil? What did Jesus say? He is the liar. And from the very start until today, that's what the devil will tell you. The moment you preach Jesus and Jesus alone, Many, many people will rise up and criticize you because you just took away all the lies of the devil. And that's Jesus alone. And many people cannot stand that. How is it possible that only Jesus is the way? It cannot be because I have done this for so long. 
I have been good. I have taught. I have done this. I am better than that person over there who has done nothing for God. The devil says, thank you. My child. My child. Very good. My child. My child. My child. Yes, criticize. 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 Judge each other. Yes. My son, my son, my daughter, my daughter. Yes, yes. I'm your father. I'm your father. Come to me. Come to me. And millions will come. All deceive because they believe that they are actually serving God the Father. Just like the Pharisees did. I'm sure many of them absolutely wanted to serve God, but they got into the law and they served the law. And the devil is up there, yes. And Jesus says, come. You know the truth. The truth is me. I will set you free. And the Pharisee says, no. You are not the truth. We know the truth. We know exactly what the truth is. We studied it in the book. We studied it in the the Tanakh, in the Torah. We studied it. We know the truth. You, Jesus, are not the truth. And Jesus says, okay. I speak what my father spoke. You Pharisees, you do what your father did. Two fathers. Who is your father? Who is your father? Law or grace? Where are you? God the Father, Satan the Father. Also. Where are you? Come, let's pray. Uh, Thank you, Lord Jesus, Father. Jesus, your words sometimes shock us. But Father, we cling on to you because you are the only door, you are the only way. Father, it's really difficult to give up things that we have learned before, precious things, but not the truth. Because Jesus, you are the truth, the way and the life. There's no other way beside you. There's no other truth beside you. Father, we look only to you. We look to Jesus, the perfect revelation of you. Thank you, Father, for Jesus. Thank you, Father, for Jesus. Thank you, Father, for Jesus. The only way, the only door to life.